Hi folks, this is Robert K3 Triple R with today's question. How would you like to have a free picture book of 403 cheap, do-it-yourself, homebrew wire antennas that you can easily construct for your own ham radio station? Did I mention cheap? Keep watching to the end to get to your no-strings, no-hassle free copy. Did I mention cheap and free? So easy, a cave ham could do it. Stay tuned. This video is a shout-out of appreciation to Yulian. YO3DAC, aka VA3IUL, for his great curation of 403 wire antennas for ham radio. This is such a terrific compilation because each one has a diagram showing the dimensions and in some cases showing even the recommended construction and implementation steps. I wanted to give Ulian increased exposure for his great efforts and to spread the word to a lot more folks so they know what a great treasure trove this really is for their own personal ham radio station. The great news about almost all of these 403 wire antennas is that they are cheap to build. Ham radio can be a very expensive hobby. Yeah, I know, you heard it here first. In my case, I am known for my cheapness and I wear that badge proudly. However, there are times when I am so swamped with new consulting clients that time trumps money, priority-wise, and I go with a more expensive solution. This was the case when I ended up buying, instead of building my own two infed half-wave wire antennas that are my primary permanent HF antennas at home. I bought the My Antennas 80-10 and the 40-10 infed antennas because of their well-deserved reputation, their build quality, and their products offering a slam-dunk plug-and-play solution right out of the box so I didn't have to screw with it. This is my unsolicited, unpaid, very strong recommendation of My Antennas. I'd love to hear from each of you in the comments section. What kind of wire antennas are you using right now, and are you happy with them? Did you build your own wire antennas, or did you do what I did and buy store-bought ones? I love wire antennas for their simplicity and their low cost, along with all the experimentation you can do. For me, my time versus money store-bought solution cost me about $300 out of my wallet for that convenience. It would have been closer to $400 if I'd bought them both new instead of buying the 80 meter version used off QRZ. It also would have probably been one third the cost if I'd made my own infed halfway wire antennas and matching transformers myself instead of going with the store bought ones. Ulian's great 403 ham radio wire antenna compilation can help you avoid these kinds of costs, assuming you know how to use wire cutters a measuring tape, and a soldering iron. These 403 antennas are listed on a very long web page at Ulian's website. The link to his site is shown in the description below. As you'll be able to tell from his site, Ulian is a very creative fellow with a ton of circuits and documentation and links that could take you very worthwhile hours to explore. I like Ulian's information so much I created a PDF to put it in a more portable form for myself and others. What you're seeing in the background of my video is an autoflow of the PDF contents of the Acrobat file that I created. More information on how you can download your own copy of this PDF file in a couple of minutes. With Sunspot Cycle 25 already rolling in for us right now, HF is going to be hopping in the coming five to six years. It's one reason I was so jazzed about what I'm going to be able to do with only five or ten watts with my ICOM 705. One benefit of having been a ham for 59 years is that I'm starting to get the hang of this hobby. And one of the things I've seen is how amazing HF gets near the top of the sunspot cycle. As you can tell probably from my number of years being a ham radio operator, this is my fifth or sixth sunspot cycle. And I hope I have another one or two or even three left in me after this one. The point is that it's time right now to really get ready for HF. And a cheap way to do that is with these 403 wire antennas that you can construct yourself. These antennas have wide ranging designs and some of them are good for stealth antennas to avoid the petty HOA police forces. Others that are great for quick deployment like for field day. Others that are probably perfect for your main QTH for everyday operations. Ulian has created a smorgasbord for us of 403 possible antennas for us to feast on. Think of it as if it was an all-you-can-eat restaurant that actually had good food. In other words, if you have the space, I hope you can construct multiple antennas and run some comparisons. That way you can report back in the comments sections your successes and your failures. 
However, if you're going to build wire antennas, do yourself a massive favor and get yourself something more than just wire cutters, measuring tape, and a soldering iron. Get yourself an antenna analyzer. Yes, I know you have an SWR meter. Yes, I know your rig probably even measures SWR. But how much time are you going to waste running back and forth between the antenna and the shack? Do you realize you're probably increasing your probability of the oops, I cut off too much syndrome? I use two devices myself because they fit my particular needs. One's the Rig Expert 230 Zoom, which is on the more expensive side at about, I think, $400. And the other is one of the cheap Nano VNA devices that have hit the market in the last year or two. These things are really terrific. The one I have is the 4-inch screen H4 version which works remarkably well once you learn how to use it, and it was only 80 bucks. I primarily got this one for handling my UHF antennas that my 230 Zoom does not cover, but I was actually impressed how well it does on HF also with my HF antennas, even when I'm operating portable. The 230 is a whole lot easier to use, and it is a lot more rugged than the VNA, but both are somewhat delicate and need some protection. The photos show a couple of cases that I got off Amazon that do a great job protecting both devices, even when I'm outstanding in my field. Links are shown below in the description if you're interested. One of my upcoming videos will be a comparison of these two gizmos and highlights of the pros and cons of each. Subscribe now and click the bell to make sure you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos, including this one, comparing these two antenna analyzers. That's pretty much it for this video. Again, kudos to Ulian for his great work compiling all these antennas in one place on his website. If you'd like a free copy of my Acrobat PDF file of these 403 ham radio wire antennas for your own computer, Check out the information below in the description for the link, as well as more information and details about what we've discussed here in this video. Thanks very much for taking time to watch my video. If you found this video informative and helpful, or at least entertaining, I would greatly appreciate you taking time to subscribe to my channel, comment below on what wire antennas that you use, and of course, smash that like button right now. Next step, Go out there and choose your top three wire antennas that you actually want to build first. After all, it is so easy a cave ham could do it. That's it for now. Until next time, I am QRT. Uh, uh. Uh.